What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you had a good week. Today, we're going to be continuing our series on the top 10 worst Word of Faith teachers today. As a quick recap, Sid Roth was at number 10, and Pat Robertson came in at number 9. So let's now turn our attention to number 8. The 10 worst faith teachers today. Number 8, Jesse Duplantis. Jesse Duplantis was born in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1949. According to the official Jesse Duplantis Ministries website, since 1978, Mr. Duplantis has traveled throughout the world teaching the prosperity gospel. Duplantis is popularly known as the Apostle of Joy. Yeah. And he has been sharing his teaching through funny life lessons, personal testimonies, and religious entities on television and other media for years. Jesse Duplantis Ministries is headquartered in Louisiana and has additional offices in Australia and the UK. Like most faithers, Mr. Duplantis has his own unique style. I've read and studied many prosperity teachers over the past several years, and I can't think of two who are identical. Each one has his or her own special nuances. And let's just say that Jesse is probably best known for his distinctive humor. And I'll tell you, it's definitely distinctive. In this talk, Duplantis, having grown up in Roman Catholicism, discussed how excited he was to take communion for the first time at a Protestant church. I'll never forget when I took my first communion as a Protestant. I was, I was a little bit of fella. He said, now let's take up the cup together and I'm about ready to drink this cup. And this blood curdling scream came out this preacher and I'm, I'm going, I'm about ready to drink. He said, if you drink this unworthily, you'll damn your soul into hell. I went, no, we don't want none of this. <laughs> I ain't going to hell for a glass of well chain, brother. I, ain't all right me. <laughs> I don't have time to go into the differences between open communion and verbal closed and guarded fencing, but I would like to point out that faithers frequently criticize and misrepresent verbal fencing in their presentations and literature, as Joseph Prince did in his book, Eat Your Way to Life and Health. Despite his festive humor and jovial personality, Mr. Duplantis has taught some of the most outlandish things over the years. In this talk, the faith leader argued that it was actually Adam who breathed life into the animals and not the Lord. God made animals and didn't have that far as idea what they were. You know what I'm you? Tell me the book of Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 verse 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them. Look at me. Look at me. He didn't walk them. He didn't fly them. He brought them. Watch me, pick it up, bring it over there, unto Adam to see what he would call them. He didn't know what it was. He just made something. He said, what do you think that is, Adam? Do you know that they were not alive when he brought them? I am so lost. The same Hebrew word for brought is used in Genesis 8-9 when Noah brought the dove into the ark. Did Noah need someone to breathe life into this dove? Analyzing prosperity teachers can be exasperating. They were just like Adam was. Adam was creating the image of God. He was a speaking spirit like God is. Let me show you. Let me just show you. If you don't believe me, watch this. This will bless you. Watch it. And, and out of the ground, verse 19, Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every what? Living. They weren't alive. But in Genesis 1.24, the same Hebrew word for living is used. And immediately after, in verse 25, Moses specifically states that God, not Adam, made all of these living beasts, cattle and creeping things after their kind. Uh, never mind. In this segment, Mr. Duplantis explains how Jesus defended his eternal sonship. Jesus never said this. He never urged people to believe he was the son of God. You never heard Jesus say, listen, I'm the son of God. Come on. I really am. Listen to me. I'm the son of God. You got to believe this. Come on. What's the matter with you? No. He said, when you see me, you see the father. They said, we don't believe it. He said, yo mama. Oh, get out of here. I'm out of here. Moving along, we're just moving right along here. In this next clip, Mr. Duplantis provides a brilliant exegesis of Exodus 4.10. Moses, Aaron, and Miriam was a bunch of dysfunctional people. Moses couldn't even talk, he stuttered. I mean, how do you get three million people out to follow you? Follow me. I mean, it gets to the Red Sea. Behold! I mean... What do you even say to that? Do I really even need to say anything? Then I realized that God 
needs our love. I didn't realize how much he needed me. See, I've always thought of me needing him. I'd do anything for you. And he smiled at me. He said, I chose you. He said, no one else wanted you. And I need you, boy. I need you, Jesse. I said, okay. Dear friends, God loves us absolutely, but make no mistake about it. God does not need us. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the wonderful counselor, almighty God, prince of peace. He has need of no one and no thing. God loves us, but he does not need us. We need him. Thank you, Pastor Peters, for providing us with some solid biblical truth after that series of fiascos from Mr. Duplantis, which we all just endured. Well, I've touched on this before with Creflo Dollar, but in 2018, Mr. Duplantis requested his followers send him donations so he could buy a $54 million jet. Now, some people believe that preachers shouldn't have jets. I really believe that preachers ought to have and go on every available voice, every available outlet to get this gospel preached to the world. Let me just say this. We're believing God for a brand new Falcon 7X so we can go anywhere in the world one stop. Now, people say, my Lord, can't you go with this one? Yes, but I can't go at one stop. And you see, if I can do it with one stop, I can fly it for a lot cheaper because I have my own fuel farm. So think about this. All these, this was paid cash. This was paid cash. This was paid cash. And the new one's going to be paid cash also. I really believe that if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. Oh. Okay then, as part of my research for this video, I read Mr. Duplantis' book, Distortion, The Vanity of Genetically Altered Christianity. Like many faithers, he opened with the argument that Isaiah 53 teaches that Christ's stripes were provided for our physical healing. Andreas, my Baptist brother, that's a passage that you and I are definitely going to have to cover on one of our future podcasts. But let me just provide a brief response in the meantime. Prosperity teachers have an over-realized eschatology. Physical perfection comes in the new heavens and the new earth. Right now, we are still living in the tension of the already and the not yet. Isaiah 53 finds its full realization when we receive our resurrected bodies. Then, we will be made perfectly whole both physically and spiritually. In this same title, Mr. Duplantis stated that Christians can live for a long time without sinning at all, and that it is improper for pastors to teach believers not to expect healing and prosperity in their lives. He warns against genetically altered Christianity, which I suppose is the rest of us. Although I could not find an accurate representation of conservative Presbyterian, Lutheran, Baptist, Pentecostal, Methodist, or non-denominational Protestantism in it anywhere. And believe me, I looked hard. Most of the examples were anecdotal and had very little to do with what our churches actually teach and believe. In summation, Jesse Duplantis joins the long list of false prosperity teachers who peddle the word of God for profit. Mr. Duplantis' mockery of the ministerial office, as well as his dangerous word of faith doctrines, make him a person that authentic believers truly need to mark as a false teacher. Christians should do everything they can to avoid falling into the deadly trap hidden under his thinly veiled humor. Ladies and gents, if you have your own thoughts, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Have an awesome week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. Now we'll see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.